And the next speaker is uh, Peter Goves about the subcyclo. It's a new uh, treatment option for glaucoma. So it's a pleasure for me to introduce Peter Goves. All right, thank you very much for uh, inviting You're me welcome. to participate in this. And um, it's, a, it's a novel new world and a new way for us all to um, <laughs> attend meetings. Uh, and I suspect probably will become much more widely used uh, in the years to come. So I'm going to be talking to you about subcyclo, um, a new treatment option for advanced or refractory glaucoma. Uh, I um, have no financial interest in the technology or techniques apart from being a speaker for Quantel. The difference between um, subcyclo cyclophotocoagulation and conventional is uh, really to do with the titration of power and because we are using um, the uh, a, a much lower amount of power we are actually able to tease out some effect in the trabecular meshwork as well compared to uh, co um, conventional cyclodiode where there's 100% uh, continuous wave uh, the typically used setting on subcycle is a 31.3 percent cycle um, avoiding the uh, three and nine o'clock positions giving you about 320 degrees and you typically do 80 seconds uh, in each half of the eye and as you would expect similar to conventional cyclophotocoagulation we have destruction of the pigmented ciliary body which reduces aqueous production but there is also growing body of evidence that you have remodeling of the uveoscleral pathway and um, we are also getting uh, an action which has been termed as similar to pilocarpine on the longitudinal fibers of the ciliary muscle, um, both of which can increase uh, aqueous humor filtration. Now, it is a painful procedure and as with continuous wave cyclophotocoagulation, you do need a thorough anesthetic either a subtunons or peribulbar block. I prefer a peribulbar block as uh, the subconjunctival hemorrhages occur less frequently and I think anything that reduces the amount of hemorrhage and potentially um, surface uptake of energy uh, is a good thing. Afterwards uh, everybody gets steroid drops for eight to ten days and a non-steroidal drop for up to a month and you can retreat after two to three months. The treatment settings, as I've already said, the typical setting is a 31.3% duty cycle, but if you have patients with a history of inf any inflammation in the eye, either uveitis or keratitis, then reducing to a 25% duty cycle is good, uh, and it might be worthwhile thinking of using a 25% duty cycle in repeat treatments. The difference between the two is you're giving many more pulses, but with a reduced um, time on each pulse with a 25% duty cycle. So in total, reduced energy compared to the 31.3. So when you are giving your treatment, it's very useful to mark out where your ciliary body is. This is a generic marking at three millimeters. I prefer um, localizing the um, ciliary body by using transillumination and, and I use this in all my cases. This is a typical case demonstrating conjunctival overgrowth and if you just measured three millimeters you would struggle to find where your ciliary body is whereas if you transilluminate you can now very clearly mark out um, where your treatment area is going to be and um, I think this should be the method that, that people use if they are, are planning on using this technique. Now, in addition, in a moment, we'll see the inferior marking. I'm going to skip ahead. And you can see as we are moving the laser probe in our treatment area, it's very common for you to snag conjunctival vessels and get these small hemorrhages. My top tip here is to coat that whole area in a gel such as viscoelastic gel um, just to get this to glide easier. 
Now, the question is, is cyclodide a valid treatment for refractive glaucomas? And we can say unequivocally, yes, multiple treatment studies show that cyclodiet as a treatment modality is valid. Uh, this is continuous wave cyclodiet in advanced glaucoma cases. They had a, a large group of patients and they felt that this was a safe and effective way of controlling refractive glaucomas. Uh, in this group from Bristol, uh, they demonstrated this, uh, the same uh, efficacy. The question now is, can you translate the data from cyclodiet to subcyclodiet? And there's an excellent paper um, that was published in 2015. If we just go back, sorry, go back to that one. Um, and in this paper by um, Chu's uh, group, they showed that the subcyclo directly compared to continuous um, cyclodiet laser was uh, more, it was as effective, but provided a much more consistent and predictable effect on lowering the intraocular pressure. So there's no difference between using continuous cyclodiode and subcyclo between the two groups, no difference in the need for retreatment, no difference in the decrease of IOP, but the complication rate was lower with subcyclo. So is subcyclo um, effective in refractive glaucoma? Again, there's now more and more publications showing us that in all of these cases um, we've had a good uh, if measurable effect with um, complications that one can uh, expect with cyclodiet but again the complication rate is reduced with subcyclo. Um, the uh, interesting thing is that regardless of which um, group is looking at this data and, and the, the latest group was a one to two year follow-up they're getting consistent um, in the region of 20 to 30 percent IOP reduction uh, in this group 141 eyes of 136 patients followed up for two years baseline IOP was 23.5 and by year two we were still sitting at 16.8 millimeters of mercury so we can say subcyclo has been shown to be effective in our refractive glaucoma groups. Now, why are we trying to use a gentler method, apart from the obvious of reducing um, complication rates? It does give us another option in patients with good vision. Now, traditionally, cyclodiet laser was reserved for patients with a very poor visual prognosis, uh, you were expecting a significant proportion of patients to go on to thysis and lose vision completely, but with the onset of sub-threshold treatments or sub treatments, sub these subliminal amounts of energy allow to, you to use this treatment in patients with good vision um, with, because we're reducing the complication rate. Uh, and um, this group showed um, a very good um, effect on pressure lowering with no loss of best corrected vision and their conclusion was that it should be considered much earlier in the management of glaucoma and i'll just show you a case where i've done exactly this it was an 83 year old patient she presented to me in 2013 with a cupping of 0.9 um, very significant field loss as you can see um, and she had bilateral cataract extraction and endocyclophotic calculation performed by me. Um, her intraocular pressure was controlled on Ganfort um, for uh, three years at a very comfortable level, and then she started becoming sensitive to the drop. I then changed the treatment to uh, different combinations, but she, we just couldn't get back to that good level of control or comfortable eyes. I performed bilateral SLT for her, and this worked really quite well in her left eye, dropped the pressure down nicely in her left eye, but no measurable effect in the right eye. And I then proceeded with the right subcyclo laser, and I last saw this lady just before lockdown. Pressures were back at a really good level, 12 and 11 millimeters right and left, respectively, awful treatment. Um, and she's done extremely well maintaining 
um, very good central vision despite that very significant field loss. Um, and so even with this patient who you would deem to have a very delicate um, nerve and um, potentially um, catastrophic results if you performed a drainage operation, I think this, this was the right thing to try and um, treat her with a uh, much gentler treatment. So the question should be, is there still a place for continuous wave cyclodiode? So I would suggest that probably all cyclodiode procedures for glaucoma should be <coughs> subcyclo and we should reserve continuous wave treatment for niche areas such as closing a small cyclodialysis cleft. Thank you for your attention. Yes, thank you very much, Peter, for this nice presentation.